It's Power 105, one home in the Breakfast Club, Angie Martinez, and I'm hip-hop and R&B, it's your main man, I'm Easy, and it's the Sunday sit-down, and this Sunday I have, um, actor, model, and basketball player, a little bit, <laughs> my guy Mark Tallman, and that's a perfect last name for you, Tallman, <laughs> he's in the building, what's going on, Yes, man? sir, I'm good, man, I'm, I'm happy to be here. How, how you been? I'm I'm good, you know. On the grind, like like most of us actors Absolutely. slash basketball players. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a trip, man. That name, it's one of those names like, you know, blacksmith or something yeah. like that. Where if you look down your heritage and your lineage, it just describes what you were. Like my family, I'm the runt, man. I'm, so they're all tall. Yeah, my That's father's crazy. six seven, my mother's six two, and I have a six six little brother. So That's like. Crazy. And he's got a little game too, Tri State. We played yeah, in, yeah. in, in, a, in a basketball game a little while ago. Yeah. And I mean, being as tall as Mr. Tallman is, he's pretty good. He's <laughs> pretty good. Now, um, are you from New York? No, no. I'm, I grew up as an army brat. So oh, really? I lived in Hawaii, Germany, Texas, Washington State, all over the place. What's the longest you stayed in one spot? Uh, four years was was Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii has my heart, man. Oh, that that was a, a special place. place. I mean, it's place yeah, it's an easy Hawaii. place to. How old to were you while you in Hawaii? I was like preteen to early teen. Oh, beach. Um, yeah. Oh, man. great weather. And every every day is a good day. Out Listen, there. try to stay. This guy didn't struggle, fam. He was in Hawaii. <laughs> He's on. good right out here. <laughs> Shout out to my guy, Mike. Oh, trust me. I, I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up with with a lot of money, though. I mean, you know, every every army brat can tell you. My dad was. A soldier, he served um, overseas and um, in, in combat, and you know we we had a, a tough time because he was always away. That's whether gotta be it was, scary. Whether it was combat in the field, um, and my mother, man, talk about an incredible woman to mm. to raise three boys on her own. Tall as all these Not guys on her own, are, but for the most part, you know, when with him That's traveling crazy. back and forth doing um, military things, but it was it was something I'm really really grateful for, especially being an actor like. The no. way it forces you to adjust to every circumstance you're, you're put in. You you get used to being the new kid in class or like the new guy mm -hmm. on set or, or whatever it is you have to uh, adjust to. So, so it's, you would say, it's something I'm grateful so for. So you would say your, your army brat childhood kind of made you ready for acting then? Oh, absolutely, man. It, what it made does. you pursue acting? Um, it was something I always... Um, always was interested in uh, I mean I grew up as an athlete um, played a tall man. yeah yeah <laughs> played, played division one football what school um, I played at Bucknell University nice nice um, and then was was uh, in camp with a, a few NFL teams and almost got immediately released and and, and, and that <laughs> it's was a hard sport. That, that, it is a hard sport but that was that was my wake-up call to say okay I, I need to figure out what I want to do in my life um, but I, I always had a, a deep respect and in, in knowledge of what good acting was because okay. my father actually did a lot of theater um, in the Army. Because uh -oh. the, the Army had, just like there's, um, you know, community basketball teams or, or choirs or whatever, the Army has all those. There's, there's all-Army basketball team, all-Army baseball team, mm -hmm. um, and he was part of a, a theater troupe. So even when we were living in, say, Washington State on, on the West Coast, we would travel to New York to see stuff on Broadway because he was so jacked up about it. And Kept so you guys culture. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, being exposed to all that culture, I knew from a young age um, it was something I really liked. But, you know, as an athlete, especially if you're playing at a high level, you just, you don't have time for no. it. Like, being an athlete, that's your job. Yeah. And in my case, it literally was, you know, mm -hmm. that was, that was what paid for all of my college, and they expect you to be there <laughs> yeah. like it is a job. Now, now, um, I've been told, because I don't play Grand Theft Auto, uh, I try to <laughs> play, I, I, try, I play sports games, I'm a sports guy, I mean, sure. and I'm trying to get into the whole voiceover realm as well, ah, so how, be how did that, how did, thank you, how did that, um, <laughs> how'd you get into, how'd that work for you? Um, well, for me, that's actually something that my commercial agency sets up, so oh. as an actor, you usually work with several different agencies. You have a manager that kind of oversees all that you do, mm -hmm. um, but you have what in the industry they call a legit agent who takes care of your um, film, TV, and theater stuff. Then you have a commercial agency who does all your commercial stuff as well as voiceover, um, promo type stuff. 
Um, sometimes they'll also do um, animation. There's there's a lot of things that commercial agencies yeah. take care of. And then you have a separate agent um, for things like print modeling, like mm -hmm. if I've done a, a Verizon print campaign. Now, yeah. what what brings it? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm finding out pockets. I'm going into his pockets, Tricy. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, what what gives, what brings home the most? The 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 modeling or the acting uh, or the voiceovers? No, no. It would it would definitely be the acting um, because, it, well, at least as long as you're a union actor. If you're yeah. a union actor, um, the residuals is what that yo really listen. Eat off of. I used to talk to a chick that was getting residuals, fan. <laughs> That's where the money's at. She did a, 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 a voiceover thing, I think, three years ago, and was still cashing royalty checks. Oh that's yeah, you're, great. Yeah, that's that's where you live. I mean, especially in the commercial world mm -hmm. nowadays. I mean, you can you can do a commercial, which in most cases is one day of work, and you know you'll receive some pay up front. But with residuals, you'll usually get as long as it's a national union mm -hmm. commercial. You'll make like forty grand in that one day. As I, as um, I look over to residuals. my manager, as I look over to my manager, <laughs> fam, voiceover works. Man. Hop on that. Anyways, um, my guy Mark my Tolman manager. is in the build. It's in the building. Um, let's talk about this addicted film. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Talk to me. Um, addicted is cool, man. It's a it's a passion project by um a young, vibrant director, Dan Jensky, um, who went to University of Missouri. Um, ended up moving out to L.A. To, to become a director and went back to Missouri to finish his schooling because he left school early to, to get into directing. Um, in this project, the um, in the title, Addicted, ADD is in all caps because it's about, um, and I think it's a, a thing that's close to his heart because of what he had to deal with um, with him and I think a, a few friends who had struggled with ADD mm -hmm. and like people prescribing yeah. meds and what it does to you. Um, and I play this uh, guy, Officer Besser, who deals with the the main character gotcha. who's who's in college and is addicted. Not, not gotcha. yeah. All right. So now um, give me the most awkward thing to happen to you on set whether it's you oh, flubbing man. a word or having because here's another thing like i said i used to date this girl that was in yeah, yeah, yeah. kissing scenes love scenes yeah, yeah. if you're dating a chick how does that work like <laughs> guy, listen it was i was sick to my stomach having to watch her kiss another guy <laughs> Ugh, it's tough no now, I, I totally get that um i'm blessed man my, i don't know how my wife does it and and i don't think she knew she would be able to deal with it as well as she does, because that's that's all anyone ever asks her. They're like, "Yo, how do you watch him kiss Man, Catherine Heigl?" When she came home that night, kiss? I didn't kiss her. She she came home. I'm not kissing. Like, go brush your teeth, fam. Yeah, I'm not doing like, it. I'm not kissing. No, so, so. no, I'm not doing it. Can't yeah. go brush your teeth. So Sunday sit down. I'm easy. Yeah. Mark Tolman's in the building. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Give me one of your most awkward moments on set. Um, one of my most awkward moments um, at, does have to do with a, a love scene. See? Um, but it was it was awkward in the wrong way. So oh, we boy. start doing the scene, and I knew there was some underlying comedy in the writing. But we start doing the scene. It's a sex scene, and the director cuts us immediately, and she's like, "Look, y'all are connecting too well. This is too real." You you need to be really bad at sex because that this character <laughs> that's what made it funny. He okay. thought he was he was the man uh -huh. in bed, but he was one of them guys who was just like ah 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 ah. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Know, Two pumps in his Yeah, that gotcha. was it. Um, and I'm telling you, man, people always ask like, "Yo, man, what's it like kissing so and so on set?" Or 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 when you do uh, questions, I, I get asked. People will be like, "Yo, man, w when you did that sex scene, were you like?" Yeah, yeah. Hard, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, look, if you could be in my shoes, you have no idea. This is not you cheating on your wife in a bedroom alone. This is you going to work and you're doing this sex scene in front of about 60 people. And, and half the time the director or the, you know, one of the PAs is running through or you have um, a, an AD saying, you know what, that's good. But if you could if you could do that same thing, face in the light and, yeah. and get or give your your scene partner some light. And, you know, when you're thinking about all these things, the last thing you're doing is like really intimately connecting. I mean, mm -hmm. you do that as an actor, you do connect, but. I mean, it's, it's... It's too many things running yeah, through your mind. Yeah, too much going on. Gotcha. But, but that, 
the the sex scene where I was supposed to be bad was just awkward on multiple levels. First of all, me, you know, being dang near naked <laughs> doing this bad sex scene and then on top of that, you know, having everyone watch, it was it was awkward. It's still you. awkward to even talk about. Oh man, Mark <laughs> Tom is in the building. Yes, sir. It's the Sunday sit down. Um, what do you have planned coming up in the next couple of years? Oh man, I um I mean as as I think every actor would say, um, you know, I, I just want to be working. I, at this point, when I first got into the industry, you know, I wanted to be starring in this, that, and, and the next thing. But I've understood, especially now having a son, I, I have um, an eight mo- an eight month old boy. Uh, oh, I and, just and I just Obi. had a son in Get April. Out. Yeah, Word? three Congrats, months. It'll be four man. months. Oh, it's the greatest <laughs> thing that ever happened. It's again. unbelievable. Oh. Like it's it's the. It's the best. We always joke. My wife and I say it's the best and worst thing that ever happens mm-hmm. because it's tough, man. Oh, you are not work. lying. It Yo. is hard work, but it's the best, man. There's it, nothing I would trade it, about. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's a lot of hard work, but when you see them smile and the little things uh, that you watch them evolve, it, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's incredible. I'm, I'm thinking amazing. about them right now. I'm, I can't wait to go home tomorrow. I can't <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah. Oh man, daddy um, talk. Ty, yeah, say, I'm sorry. daddy talk. <laughs> so with with knowing that and and you know maturing. Um, as a husband, as a father, at this point you realize um, to remind yourself to be grateful just to be working. Yes. Like the fact that, you know, we've been able to, to buy in New York City, which nowadays seems impossible, yep. um, is, is a good thing because it just means work is, is steadily happening. Um, so future-wise, I'm going to pull back from saying what I used to say and say that I want to be, you know, a lead in such and such film for mm-hmm. this studio um, and I just want to be working um, doing the art that I love and providing for my family like if I can provide for my family so and so also I- love going to work oh. I mean, I'm sure you know oh, this is, this is, this, I love what I do and yeah. I provide for my family it couldn't be any more any yeah. better yeah, there's it. nothing like it. So that's that's what I want for the future. Absolutely. Uh, I had Chaz Lamar up here a little while ago, and that's oh, exactly okay. what he said. He said, I just want to be working. Yeah. As an actor, you just don't know when <laughs> the next one's come. You just want to work. It's true. I mean, there's there's super talented actors, actors out there who aren't working. I mean, I, people I came into the industry with who are either still waiting tables, still... <sighs> bartending or just said forget it i'm just i'm not pursuing this anymore Mm -hmm. um so that you know thinking about that reminds me to be grateful to to be a working actor that's that's what it is and now um like i i asked the um chaz the other day Uh um it seems like hollywood has this this stigma with whether it's black movies black Uh actors you guys can only play certain amount of uh, certain roles and certain things what what is your your point on that oh man it's it is frustrating as um, as a black actor because it's... Even the light-skinned guys get it, man. I'm telling you, the light-skinned <laughs> guys really get it. You, here's what I've learned, and I mean, I'm hoping I'm not stepping on toes or, or rubbing people the wrong way, but um, it's interesting. The mainstream um, television and, and film industry, I feel like, when they're trying to almost meet a quota or say, as, as a production, look, we got to have... X this role line. be a, a mm-hmm. black dude, this role be an Asian guy, or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, in a lot of cases, when they say we want a black guy, it's not me. It's like he needs to be like Idris Elba or like gotcha. dark skinned black Wesley dude Snipes. Who, who everybody, sadly, like the oh, general white public is like, now that's a black guy. I got you. You know what got I'm saying? Um, whereas if we can somehow have more things produced by by black folks, they know, like, just like the, the Latino culture knows there's Latinos who look white and look black. Mm-hmm. Same thing with black folks. We know, like, there's light skin, dark skin, brown skin. Like, that's, that's what makes us people what gotcha. we are. So um, it's, it's been a frustrating thing, but I, I try um, to stay positive. And I also, as an actor, with my, my team of, of agents and my manager, I always say, like, I want to be seen in in black work or, you know, quote unquote, black work, mm-hmm. black produced work. Um, but I also don't want to be pigeonholed in, into that either, That's because, you know, there are some people who get locked into, say, the, the BET family or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. The and Tyler next Perry. thing you know, they, yeah, the Tyler Perry family and they don't get to work on NBC, ABC, CBS or, or major uh, film studios. So, um 
It's, I mean, it's it's a touchy subject, and, and I try not to get into it. Much. No, I don't want you to get in trouble. I don't want you to get in trouble. Don't want you to get in trouble. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, it's 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 worth talking about, that's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's get the discussion talked about America. <laughs> it's Power 105. What is your main man? I'm easy. The Sunday sit-down. Mark Tolman. Um, tell them how they can get in contact with you. You know, the bookings, the Instagrams. How, yeah, how can they get yeah. in contact? Um. All my stuff is Tall Man Mark. I, I try to make it easy. It's just my name, Mark Tallman, um, backwards with my last name first. Um, for Twitter, Instagram, uh, my Facebook fan page, it's it's all the same, Tall Man Mark. Um, and I, I try to show people love, man, because I, I'm I'm one of those actors. On, on the way here, I got stopped twice, um, both single ladies fans. Uh -huh. it, it's funny. I've, I've noticed when I'm clean shaven. Single ladies fans are like, yo, Reggie from Single Lady. And then when I have like some scruff, it's usually the, the more recent NBC stuff for, for State of Affairs, gotcha. depending on my look. Um, and in both of those cases today, you know, they were like really standoffish at first. They were like, I don't want to mess with you. You seem like you're on your way somewhere, but can I take a picture? And I, I'm quick to tell them like, I will always give my time, um, regardless of where my career goes, because we don't happen without the, the people watching. I say that to every person that I go to don't. events and you see things and it's like, I was like, listen, I picture, and I'm going to feel the way. Yep. Like, what happened? Yep. Everybody wanted my picture, now they don't want it no more. Yeah, yeah. So as you still want, I'll take pictures and I will sign and I'll do all that. You have yeah, to. Because I'll, like I'll you said, we are nobody without that. Absolutely. And, and it's also a, a reminder and a testament to um, the work you do. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's a reminder, even if it's someone coming up to you and saying, oh, I hated that character you played. At least it, you felt it something. Le exactly. At least it affected you. Absolutely. And that's what every actor, at least an actor who's about acting, will mm -hmm. say, I just want to affect people with my work. Bang! That's how we're going to end this one right here. <laughs> Mark Tolman, I appreciate you for qu coming by. Uh, we got to get a game you, in one of these days, man. I'm, I'm all about it, man. I, I play every chance I get. <laughs> well, so. I wish I could say the same. Next <laughs> <laughs> day, this is the Sunday sit-down. M-Easy. Mark Tolman, again, thank you for coming by, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it.